my sin or oh, the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and i bear Our scripture this morning is from Psalm 20, the 7th verse. 
Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, at United Methodist Church. It's good to see everyone here this morning. My name is Wade, I'm lead pastor of the church, and it's so good to see you all this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and you have chosen to rejoice and be glad in it. So we're so glad that you are here. We also want to make sure that we welcome the guests. If this is your first time here, our expectation is that you will encounter the presence of the living God. We're not playing. We're, we want you to encounter the presence of the living God. And we expect the same thing for the people who are worshiping with us online. So we, we pray that that will happen. So we're glad that everybody's here. When you came in, you received a worship guide that's pretty self-explanatory as to the order of worship, so we invite you to look at that. Also, the tear-off strip, if you'll tear that off and let us know you're here, whether you are a guest or whether you're here all the time, how can we pray for you? Uh, Each and every one of you have something that needs to be lifted up in prayer, and you may not have the strength to do it on your own, but you've got people here at the church who would love to stand in the gap for you. They do it in faith, and they do it in confidence and trust. How can we be praying for you? You don't have to do it by yourself. So on that tear-off strip, if you'll let us know how we can be praying for you and drop it off in the plate when it's passed later in the service as you give of your tithes and offerings, that would be fantastic. On the other side of that tear-off strip, there are different ways in which you can sign up to participate in things that are going on. As the Christian body, it's not just about receiving, it's about giving. And if you haven't signed up to do something or to be a part of something to grow or to help someone else, maybe today's the day. If you look at the back side of your worship guide, there are a few things that we want you to be aware of, uh, as well as the insert that you see. The insert, the yellow insert, is from our United Methodist Women. Today, the United Methodist Women are the ones who are greeting us at the door and handing us our worship guides, and we want to take time to, to celebrate them and thank them. They're also wanting information from you to help them understand what the perceptions are of the United Methodist Women. So I think this survey is not only for the women in the congregation, but also the men. So if you would fill that out, you can take time to fill it out, bring it back later, or you can fill it out today and put it in the offering plate. And I know that they would appreciate any feedback that you can give them. Yesterday was the garage sale or one of the garage sales that we have during the year. And there's about $6,500 so far that's been raised through that garage sale. So we want to give God thanks for that abundance. That total will go towards the Lord's Acre funds that are being raised, and we'll have more information about Lord's Acre next week as to what that money is going toward. But I just want to thank Lisa Avery and all the volunteers who came forward, not only yesterday and Friday and Thursday, but all the weeks leading up to it to prepare for it. How many of you have ever put on a garage shell at your residence? Yeah, you you need to pause and praise God for the work that these people did up here at the church because you know how how big a job that is. And so we're so thankful for them. And uh, we appreciate the really the relational connections that were made with with others in the community as they stopped by. So we can give God thanks for that. Uh, I want to invite Susan Hall to come forward. Susan Hall is going to talk a little bit about our literacy partner here in just a little bit. As she makes her way to the front, you'll see on the back side that the new partner dinner is next Sunday. So if you've been a guest of the church for a while and you want to learn more about the church, why we do what we do, and how you can be a part of it, we would love for you to come next Sunday. You can fill that uh, sign-up sheet out on the tear-off strip. Uh, Susan Hall wants to say just a few words about Literacy Partners and offer you an invitation to be a part of it. Good morning. We are very excited to be ready to start actually reading with our kiddos I just wanted to let everybody know we're pushing it back one week. We did send out an email, but if you haven't checked that, we're not going to start this Tuesday. We're going to start on the 8th. Um, It takes a lot. We have 60-plus volunteers, and we overwhelmed the staff to get it all lined up and uh, set up. But it's not too late. If you still want to join us, you can reach out to the church office or find me, and I will give you the additional information. It's a literacy program where we spend 15 minutes with, eat, with two different children, so 30 minutes a week reading um, on campus with kids who are, have been identified as needing a little extra help um, with their reading. But it's, uh, it's way more than reading. It, it's, it's life-changing. Thank you. Susan? I'm, I'm proud to say that I'm a literacy partner as well, and it makes a huge difference. And I, I want to challenge you. We love where we live. Amen? We love where we live, amen? Amen. 
Amen. Now, now, I want you to understand, I posted this on Facebook. You may not have seen that, but there are over 880 students at Acton Elementary. The richest of the rich and the poorest of the poor all go to the same school. If a child doesn't learn to read by the end of third grade, then stats on their life just continue to go down in every category. There are some of you who love Jesus, but aren't doing anything to show the love of Jesus to anyone else. You're just waiting for an opportunity. You felt nudged, but you haven't done anything. It doesn't matter whether you have a, education, a background in education or whether you think you're qualified or not. There is a child and a family in this community who needs a positive influence. For those of you who haven't signed up to do anything, sign up today to do something because it will make a generational difference. And if it's not you, then who? The second part of my sermon will be later in the service today. So just keep that in mind. Also want to share with you on the inside of the bulletin, there are some congratulations and condolences that are in order. One condolence that didn't make the bulletin because it happened after the printing. We want to lift up to you uh, June Cheek. She passed away. She was a participant in the Visionaries class as well. Her services are tomorrow morning, so please keep the Cheek family in your prayers. Uh, also, we have some congratulations that are listed, but also some we want to add. And at, at, while I'm doing this, I'm going to invite Tristan Delaney to come down as well. So Tristan's going to make her way. So as each name is read, would you please give uh, honor to God and appreciation for the people that are named? Charlotte and Scott Caro are celebrating their 26th wedding anniversary. <laughs> Dave Keniston and Sherry Kovac are celebrating their sixth wedding anniversary. They're right back there in the, the corner. Cole and Mallory Williams are celebrating their third anniversary, so we can give that thanks. Uh, two of the names that were not included in the, in the bulletin, it was just a mistake on our part, but Mindy and Andrew Badgett are celebrating 10 years, so we can give God thanks for them. And Eunice and Marvin Eastman, I think are celebrating 42 years, if I got that number right. So, yeah, we can give God thanks for them as well. Uh, we also want to, to celebrate and give God thanks for Tristan. Uh, Tristan is about to have a baby, all right? So you'll, you'll see on the back of the worship guide that there is a baby shower for her that's taking place today. And if you want to come to that, that'd be great. But also today is her last day full-time ministry on staff as our media director. She's going to be moving to a, a part-time interim position to help us continue with social media uh, but her, her life is transitioning. And so we're so thankful for Tristan, for all the media, for the things that happen on Sunday mornings, uh, the things that happen at Acton Celebrates America, if you've ever been to Acton Celebrates America, and all the slides and all the lights and everything, that doesn't just happen by itself. Tristan has been in that position for a little bit over two years, and we're so, so thankful for her. And I know you are as well. And we want to pray for her. And then I would love for you to show your appreciation for her and honor God as we move on to the next step. So I'm going to invite Ben to come forward. And Ben's going to pray over Tristan on your behalf. And wherever you are, if you wouldn't mind, just extend your hand if you are able. Uh, we're not separate from you. We are a part of you. And so if you would just extend a hand, it's okay. Go ahead and extend a hand if you're able. And we're going to trust that the Holy Spirit will move through that. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for Tristan. God, we give you thanks for her family. God, we know that right now that you are bringing them into a new stage of life. God, that you are bringing them to a new place in life. And God, we praise you. We honor you that you are bringing our family even larger. God, that you are going to raise this child up in the ways that they should go. That you are going to use Tristan and Eric to glorify your name, even if it's not in this church. God, we celebrate you today because God, even if it's not in this church, your name will be praised. God, your Holy Spirit will come down. So God, we just pray right now, pour out the Holy Spirit upon Tristan. God, pour it out upon Eric. God, pour it out upon Eden. God, just bless them today. Let them know of your grace. God, let them know of your love. God, this child that she is carrying as she comes to, to labor, God, keep her safe. Keep the child safe. God, help them to grow in love and knowledge of you. God, we praise you this morning because, God, this is not the end of the story. But, God, because this is just the beginning. God, you are doing something amazing. So, God, we praise you today. We love you today. And, God, we thank you for Tristan. 
We thank you for all that she's done in our midst. God, we thank you that she has been a conduit of your grace each and every day she's been here. God, we praise you and we praise the name of Jesus Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. Can we give God thanks for Tristan? As Tristan makes her way back to the back, I want to invite you to stand, find someone you haven't said hi to, and greet them in the love of Christ.
Can I just be 100% honest with you this morning? I don't like to pray. I've never really felt like I got a whole lot out of it. And this week I was at a conference where Christ broke down the wall. And I can tell you in all honesty for the first time in my life that I love to pray. I can tell you that for the first time in my life, I felt the Holy Spirit come upon my life in a new way, pour out on me. And that's my prayer for you this morning. We're about to enter into a time of prayer. So whatever's in your hands, would you put it aside? Whatever's on your mind, would you prepare it? Because we're going to give it to God this morning. I want you to think about that sin that you know that separates you from God because we're going to have time right now when we're going to pray for the Holy Spirit to come. We're going to pray for a time right now when God is going to take away whatever is on your heart. We're going to pray for a time right now when God is going to take it away and God's going to take away the shame that's in your life. God's going to take away the pain that's in your life. God's going to bring you healing and we're going to trust that God's going to do it. Amen? You don't believe it this morning. Are we going to trust God to do it? Amen? Let's go to God in confession this morning because we know God hears. And we know God. God loves us. Let's confess before God. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Did you know? Did you know this morning that because you prayed and because you told God, these are the things that are on my heart this morning, these are the ways that I have been away from you this week, that you are forgiven. Because, dear Christian friends, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let's keep praying, friends. What can we pray for this morning? Would you lift aloud your joys, your concerns? Together, let's respond. Lord, hear our prayers. What can we pray for this morning? Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Come on, God. Come on, Lord. Come on. Lord, hear our prayers. Come on, God, right now. Right now. Come on. Lord, hear our prayers. Come on, God. Come on, lay it down. Lay it down. Lay it down. Lord, hear our prayers. Come on, you've got something on your heart this morning. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. God's listening this morning. I promise you he is. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. God, you're here right now. We feel it, Lord. Yes. Come on, Holy Spirit. Pour out upon this church, God. Pour out upon this place, God. Pour out in our hearts and in our minds and in our bodies, God. Right now, wherever pain is, God, take the pain away. God, yes. Take the pain away this morning. God, where healing is needed this morning, pour out your healing. God, I don't know who it is right now, Lord, but pour it out. Come on, God. Pour out the Holy Spirit right now upon us because, God, we are desperate for you. 
God, we are desperate for you because we look at the world and we see the pain of this world. God, we see the heartache of this world. God, we see those who have died this week. We see those who have, who have cried and been depressed. And God, we see those who've taken their lives. And God, we pray. Because Lord, we know this is not how it's supposed to be. God, we know that this is not how the world is supposed to be. And God, it breaks our hearts. And God, yet sometimes it doesn't break our hearts. God, sometimes we see people who are in situations so desperate and and yet we just walk on by. God, forgive us of that. God, forgive us that we do not have your heart of flesh, but God, we have hearts of stone. God, take our hearts this morning. God, take our hearts and dash them upon the ground. God, throw them down, break them into a million pieces and God, put them back together with your love. God, this morning for the people in this room who don't feel like they have any friends, God, for the people who don't feel like they have any family, for the people who feel that they are alone and that they are scared, God, hold their hand this morning. Yes, God, hold their hand. God, help them to know your presence. God, help them to know your peace. God, help them to know that nothing in this world is going to make you walk away. God, their moms and dads may have walked away. God, their families may have walked away. God, their friends may have walked away. But God, you won't. God, pour out the Holy Spirit this morning upon each of us. God, this morning we pray not only for ourselves, but God, we pray for those who don't know you because we know that the church of Jesus Christ today is not enough. God, we know that the church of Jesus Christ today is not enough because God, it's not enough until every single person has come under your lordship. God, we know it's not enough until you have a great awakening in this society. God, we know that it's not enough until revival has swept across the world. And God, we know that today it can start in Granbury, Texas. God, we praise you. God, we praise you this morning because you have created us for more than what we settled for. God, we praise you this morning because you are going to work a power upon us. Yes, God, come on, God. Come in the room right now, God. God, we thank you for who you are today. God, we thank you for your promises today. God, where somebody this morning is uncomfortable. God, for where somebody this morning is not feeling it. God, I just pray that you convict them this morning. That sometimes it's in our discomfort, God, that we grow the most. So God, pour out the Holy Spirit upon us. Make us uncomfortable today. God, help Pastor Wade as he comes to speak into our hearts because, God, we know it's not him. We know it's you. God, make him a vessel of your grace this morning because, God, we want you. We want you so desperately. And, God, we know that you are right there ready. God, we thank you this morning. We praise your name this morning. And we pray all these things. Come on, God. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you're able and repeat with me what we have believed through the centuries, our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We've heard of the generosity of this church and how our blessings have come from people that uh, give, and that, that blessing goes both ways, those that receive as well. And the example is this garage sale and tremendous success that we just heard. So as we think about this time of offering and gifts and tithes, let's uh, go to the Lord in a moment of silence and to reflect on how God has blessed you and your family in your life. Holy God, as we consider the many blessings that you bestow upon us every day, both tangible and intangible, we pray during this time, this time of opportunity, that we might joyfully give back just a portion of that that we've received from you. Come, Holy Spirit, convict us. Come, Holy Spirit, convict us of this need during this time. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Kingdom cannot 
Would you remain standing? I know we usually sit, but would you remain standing as we share the Word of God today? It's different than what's printed in your bulletin this morning. It's actually Psalm 20, and Psalm is in the Old Testament, and a psalm is a song or a poem. So please give attention to the hearing of God's Word, and at the end I will say, this is the Word of God for the people of God, and that's when you all say, thanks be to God. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now, this I know. The Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. This is the word of God for the people of God. If you would please be seated, let me pray for you while you sit. Lord, these are your people. Come, Holy Spirit. Mend the brokenhearted. Heal the sick. Implant the joy of salvation. And redeem families. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Uh, last couple of weeks, we've been focusing on God bless us home. And some of you have been with us during this time and others of you haven't. Uh, really, for the last three weeks, for those of you who have or haven't been here, uh, we've really been talking about the blessings that you receive, like, like because of God's grace, that when God blesses his home, look, God, God blesses his home not because of how great you are, but because of how great God is. And, and we've talked about what it means to be blessed because we've, we kind of use that term in interesting ways, like just bless their hearts, and we don't, you really say that, like we want God to bless them, it's because we really don't know anything else to say, and they may exasperate us, and we may think they're actually crazy, so all we can do is say, I got, you know, Lord, just bless their hearts, bless their ever-loving hearts, just bless them. But I think God means more than just a throwaway line when we don't know what else to say. And being blessed is more than the abundance that many of you have. Being blessed is more than your house and it's more than your retirement. I was visiting with someone today or this week about they're in a, they're in a married relationship with someone who knows about Jesus. They love their spouse. They know about Jesus. They attend church regularly, but they never give to Jesus because what gives them blessing is seeing their retirement grow and grow and grow. And so when I heard that, my heart broke for that person, not because they didn't give to the church, man, just give somewhere, but they haven't received the full blessing of God. They may know about Jesus, but they don't know what it means to be blessed. They keep on thinking that what moth and rust will destroy will actually give them blessing. Some of you may be in that boat. Once again, don't give here. Give somewhere. Because out of the overflow of your heart, your pocketbook is open. But here's what it means to be blessed. This is the definition that we have been using that, that actually I think is pretty timeless. To be blessed is the joy that comes from being aligned with God and God's will for you and others through Jesus Christ. Can we, can we all say that together? We've been doing it for four weeks. Let's let this define what it means to be blessed moving forward. And maybe if we say it out loud, it'll stick a little bit, okay? So let's join together. The joy that comes from being aligned with God and God's will for you and others through Jesus Christ. So what are you chasing after? 
God bless this home. We want God to bless us. But now we're going to flip it just a little bit or turn the corner. What is it that you were chasing? In your faith, what is it that you are chasing? In your life, what is it that you are chasing? Are you chasing after the blessing or are you chasing after the spreadsheet? Are you chasing after God's blessing or are you chasing after security? Are you chasing after blessing or are you chasing after getting here early so no one sits in your seat? Ah, that resonated with somebody. Are you chasing after God's blessing or do you just have a form of godliness but you lack any power? In your family, in your household, whether it's one person, two people, or five people, in your home, what are you chasing after? One of the things I did just yesterday is I took a risk and I asked my wife. I said, what do you think I chased after? And I kind of said it going, please say something good. Please say something. Because she knows me better than anybody. She knows me. And I hope that you have one person around you at least. That if you ask that question, you may have to brace yourself for the response, but you would trust their answer. Ask them, what do you feel I chase after? And be ready. Now, Michelle answered, and I was all, praise Jesus that she answered this way, okay? Because it could have been, been bad. But she was, she was very, very affirming. The first thing she said that I, that I chased after was, what's God's heart? And I was all, yeah, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of my humility, y'all, all right? So, I'm, you, know, it's, you know, yes, I chase after God. And then, and then she said, you know, I, Wade, you, you chase after raising kids to be healthy, functioning adults. And I was like, yes, yes. She said, you know, you're not, you're not just focused on the present, but, er, but most of the things that you do, Wade, you're, you're focused on helping them raise them up to, to actually be responsible adults and actually love Jesus. And I was like, thank you, Jesus, at least in that one snapshot. Maybe something's happening. And she said, the last thing is you strive, you chase after knowledge, like you love learning, you love being challenged, you love reading things, and you love taking things in and being exposed to things. And I was all, yes, she knows me. And then she said, you also chase after the perfect vacuum. <laughs> and I go, what? I mean, she had me at the three, but now she threw in the perfect vacuum and she explained it a little bit. And then she sent me pictures. Okay, so just three pictures. Let me, let me share with you how easy it is to fall into things that we chase after. So, so this is Caleb. Caleb is about five years old here, and I train my children up in the ways that they should go, so I'd show them how to vacuum, right? So this is a Dyson vacuum cleaner. I had that Dyson for about 10 or 12 years, and I say I had it because that was my vacuum. I know there's some psychological effect about seeing the straight lines. When you can't control anything else, you can control the, the lines in the carpet. Amen? That Dyson was my baby. I actually had five kids, Hannah, Jacob, Caleb, Rebecca, and my Dyson. That's it. So I let Caleb vacuum. And then uh, when the Dyson got sick, I took it to the, to the vacuum hospital. And this is Caleb and Rebecca down in Austin after we got baby back home. That's what I called her baby, got her back home. And uh, they went with me and you, know, they, you can just tell the, the joy in their faces, right? <laughs> and then in, in 2017, when we moved here, baby died. <laughs> it was a sad day in the Kello house. But she said that and she was right. The perfect vacuum. And I'm still on the search for the perfect vacuum because I haven't replaced baby yet, all right? So, so look, for, for me, I may, I may have that stuff which is very, very affirming from Michelle. I mean, she knows me. She knows my warts. She knows my strengths. She knows my weaknesses. She knows everything. The people closest to you that you spend the most time with know you ask them, unless you're scared. 
And then if you're scared, you need to ask yourself why. Why would you not open yourself up to that vulnerability of those closest to you ask, uh, answering for you when you ask the question, what is it that you chase after? Are you afraid that they might actually pinpoint what you're wasting your time on? Ask them. Now, when we think about chasing, for, for me, it's, it's a vacuum, and it's really subtle, and I'll go, it's just a vacuum. It's funny, right? It's funny. But it's those things that we think are funny that end up taking our attention. Chasing after God's blessing takes intentionality. It, it takes focus. It doesn't mean you don't vacuum your floor, for example, and it doesn't mean that you don't play golf, and it doesn't mean you don't play in your wine club, whatever that is. It means you don't do those things that, that you have ability to do. But it does mean you seek after the Lord. You seek God's kingdom first and everything else will fall into place. That's what it means. So what is it that you're chasing after? If you're just playing the game of Christianity, then you're really just chasing appearances. One of the things I loved about Ben's transparency this morning his eyes have been opened up to the great immense power and the breadth and depth and, and majesty of God's grace. And because of, that leads him to experience prayer in a different way. And if anyone walks out of this sanctuary today, giving him a hard time because he was on fire with the Spirit this morning, you're going to talk to me. Because as soon as, soon as you negatively take a pot shot at somebody, then what that does is that quenches the spirit. And, and I, I can tell you, we don't need the spirit quenched more. We need it inflamed more. Amen? So uh, I'm just putting you on, on notice as your pastor. Don't make me chase after you. You affirm. And if you can't affirm, just walk on. And the Lord might get a hold of you. But I want to go back to this passage of Scripture in Psalm 20. We're going to look at the last half of it here. We're talking about chasing after God's blessing in our household. We want God to bless our home, but, but what is your intentionality? What is it that you're chasing after? So go back to the passage of Scripture. Now this I know, this is a psalmist who is writing this. He's writing a poem or a song. The Lord gives victory to his anointed. Anointed are those who have been set apart for God's purposes. They, they, those things are those persons that have been set apart for God's purposes. When Christ claimed you, when you claimed Christ, you were set apart for God's purposes purposes. You were anointed. You were created on purpose for a purpose. This isn't just about some priestly people. It isn't just about the, the one percent. It's you. You are the anointed because God gives himself to those whom he calls. Okay, I want you to hear that. For those of you who think there are different strata and that you're not the super Christian and you don't have the title, look, the title, the only title that you need is you are a child of the living God. That's the only title that you need. So the Lord gives victory to his anointed, and you are the anointed. God gives victory to the anointed. He answers him from the heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power in his right hand. We talked about this before. Some of us think that Jesus and God are just therapeutic models that we worship. I mean, he's not just a God of therapy. He's a God of power to overcome the, the chains of this world. Jesus came and he healed the brokenhearted. He gave sight to the blind. He made those who couldn't speak, speak. And we also know that he comes and he heals families. He comes and he mends those broken pieces. He takes those, those roads that are wavy and curvy and he makes them straight. That's the God that we worship. Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. Maybe a modern day version of this is some trust in the spreadsheet. Some trust in the seat, but we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. Once again, who is it? What is it that you're chasing after? What is it that you trust? They are brought to their knees and fall. He's really talking about the chariots and the other things, the horses. They are brought to their knees and fail, but we rise up and stand firm. Everything else that we put our trust in, Jesus says that moth and rust will destroy. All that you keep on placing your hope in, whether it's the things of this world or the affirmations that you get from other people, whether what gives you strength is that everyone has to like you or not, quit chasing after that and chase after first things first, which is the Lord Almighty who gives you the victory. Lord, give victory to the king 
Answer us when we call. So if you want transformation, if you want something, if you want blessing in your household, if you want to chase after that transforming generations, and I know some of you don't have kids in your house anymore. Some of you don't have grandkids in your house anymore, and some of you are thinking, grandkids, that was a long time ago. I'm talking about great-grandkids. I don't care what generation you're talking about. You have an opportunity to chase after God's blessing so that he would impact your whole household, your generations, your family. And if you don't have a family, the people around you, your neighbors, you are the anointed ones. What are you chasing after? So in order for us to live into that transformation, to receive that, that resurrection power, a couple of things need to be kept in mind. One is, and I would love for you to write this down, maybe take a picture. I trust that the Lord's going to speak through it, or you can just stare at me. Come on now. Unlearn. Everyone say unlearn. Unlearn old family habits and patterns with God. Some of us come from a family tradition where, where we came to church on Sunday, but we never talked about God on Sunday afternoon or through the rest of the week, and you've raised your kids that way. Some of you are part of family traditions where you're very stoic, and God bless the stoics. But you got it all up here, and nothing has dropped 18 inches down here. You've heard a lot of sermons, but you haven't lived them out yet. You've sent a lot of Sunday school classes, but you haven't acted on it. And because that is what has been modeled for you, maybe in your family or the family of faith. Some of us didn't grow up in a, gener or a genetic family of faith, but the people that we hang out with, they are our faith family, and they've modeled us some really bad patterns and habits. Some of those habits are, look, we only go to God when, uh, let me translate this in the church world, when stuff hits the fan. That's been modeled for us. You don't seek after God in the blessings. You only seek him when stuff happens. That's a bad pattern. You got to unlearn that. If you're going to be chasing after God's blessings, you got to earn, learn, learn, unlearn some bad patterns and habits. If your kids, if you ask your kids or your grandkids what they perceive you chase after, are you prepared for their answer? Also, it's not just unlearning old family habits and patterns with God, but being willing to learn new family habits and patterns with God. Look, I know the old adage, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I can tell you some of you, you're, you're double ARP members and you're getting social security and you're, you're like, man, I moved down to Granbury to be retired. You, you know that you are not retired in the eyes of God. You are a child of his. You know that, right? Any amen? You know that, right? Some of you are like, I'm retired. I'm done learning. That's not what a disciple says, y'all. That's, that's what people say who aren't chasing after God. That's what people say who just want to be blessed but don't want to be a blessing. That's what people say who haven't learned otherwise that you, doesn't matter how much gray you have in your hair or what the date is on your birth certificate, look, you are a child of the Lord and the Lord wants to train you up in the ways that you should go. And you haven't graduated yet. And I, and I apologize if you've ever gotten the impression from anyone in any church, anytime, anywhere, that you reach a point where now you can settle. That's a, that's a heresy that's been given to you, and that's not the truth of the gospel. The, 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 and the last thing is this, is, is, is trust in the name of Jesus. Remember the scripture that we read, some people put their trust in chariots and horses, but we put our trust in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, even those of us in this room. Look, you've got to wrestle with that. There, there's not much trust in the Lord, but I want to tell you that the Lord is trustworthy. The, the Lord is someone worth leaning in to. The, the Lord is someone to, to, to run after and embrace. What is it that you're chasing after? You know, when you die, your money isn't going with you. When you slip from the bounds of this earth into the realm of eternity, whatever you are chasing after will fade away 
And that which you have built up, you will be left to someone else and someone else will take the reins of it. That's an Old Testament ecclesiastical understanding of there's nothing new under the sun. So what are you chasing after? Are you chasing after Jesus, that he would transform your heart and then therefore you would begin to make a generational difference in your family, just one person at a time that would then flow down to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation? Are you looking at chasing after God's blessing so that you might be a blessing at your country club, that you might be a blessing at your wine club, that you might be a blessing with whomever it is that you hang out with? Or are you chasing after the fact that you don't want to get too close to Jesus because that really disrupts your social calendar? Some put their trust in parties. Some put their trust in reputation. But the anointed put their trust in the Lord Almighty. Now, some of us are sick. We're ill. We put on a good front. Our families aren't here to show other people how dysfunctional our families are. Some of you here with your spouse this morning, y'all had a fight on the way here. Some of you here with your loved one and you've been in stony silence with one another for several days. Be it you're here because you're wanting to keep up appearances, but did you know that you might be here because the Lord wants to get a hold of you? Some of us are sick. Some of us are sick and, and Jesus said, look, it's not, the, it's not the healthy who need doctor, it's the sick. Jesus called a great physician. When we're chasing after God's blessings, it's a matter of coming forward before God and going, look, I, I repent. I, I'm tired of playing this game. I'm tired of chasing after vacuum cleaners or anything else that's taking my attention away from you, Lord. I need your anointing and I need your healing. And Lord, I want you to bless my home. I don't want to just hear it anymore, but Lord, the scriptures call that if someone is sick, to step forward and, and to pray and, and seek after the anointing. So then in that tangible means of grace, you might receive a measure of the Holy Spirit that mends the brokenhearted. The early Christian church, James, asked this question. He says, anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Are any of you happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Is your household sick? Is the generational network of your family sick? Then let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer that's offered in faith, will make the sick person or the sick family what? And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person or the sick family or the sick household or the sick generation what? The Lord will what? And if they have what, they will be what? What are you chasing after? At this time, I'm going to invite Jordan to come forward, wherever Jordan is. And she's just going to play in the bracket. I'm going to invite the, the clergy people to come forward. And look, I, I want God to bless you. I can't bless you. Maybe I can be an instrument. Maybe I can be a conduit. So can these folks up here. But we want to pray a prayer of a anointing over those who are sick. And if you can't admit that you are sick and in need of God's grace and healing in church, where in the world are you going to do it? So some of you are going to feel led to, to come up, and you've got Pastor Randy over there. Maybe you don't want to come up to the front. You've got Ben over there. You've got Christy up here, and I'll be up here. And You know, if you want us to pray for you, we'd love to pray for you. Now, this isn't going to be communion where you've got ushers directing you. 
we trust that you can politely ask the person next to you to move their legs just a little bit to get down the pew. God is involved with that. All that's going to happen is for those who are in need of, of prayer and anointing to chase after God's blessing, we're just going to ask, can we pray for you? And all you have to do is say yes if you come up, or I may just come to where you are. And we'll put oil on your forehead and pray for the Lord to bless you. We're not magicians. You have to take responsibility for the healing in your household. For the responsibility for the part that you've played in it, but also the responsibility for the healing moving forward. Man, we would love to pray for you. And if you don't feel led to do that, because I know it's out of your comfort zone for many of you, uh, man, Jordan's going to be singing. Love for you to sing with her. At the end, we're going to have our closing hymn of praise like we always do. So we're going to come back in the order. But we trust this is going to be a holy moment for somebody, and there's at least one person who's ready to step forward in this. If you need prayer, will you come forward? I need your help. There are more people up here than the four pastors can pray over. You are the anointed. We would love to have people come up and just pray for these folks. There's oil on the railing. Husbands and wives and families, if you have oil around you, you can, in the mighty name of Jesus, you can anoint and pray for one another. But are any, any among you sick? Are any among you in need of healing? Are any of you in need of a generational change within your family? If you're being stirred, then let's pray it. Let's seek after the Lord first, and everything else will fall into place.
This morning, uh, we're actually going to continue praying. So what we're going to do is we're going to invite Jordan to continue singing the song. Uh, if, if you don't need prayer anymore this morning, that's all right. I want you to go to Sunday school classes, um, and I want you to, to have a great Sunday morning. We thank you for being here this morning. We hope that you've had an experience of the presence of God. But if you're not done yet, you don't have to leave. If you're not done yet and you need the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, can you feel him this morning? He's here. There's something in somebody's life this morning that God is desperate to go after. There is something in somebody's life this morning that you have not yet laid down at the cross. And it's going to happen right now. So Jordan's going to continue singing, but if you want to leave, feel free to leave. The media team is going to begin setting up for the next service because they need to do that, but that's not going to stop us. We're going to continue praying because God's not going to stop. And if you walk out that door this morning and you know that you've made the choice not to lay something down at the altar, come back this week. I'm going to pray with you sometime this week. Pastor Wade would love to pray with you sometime this week. And if you want one of us to come to you right now, would you just raise a hand? because we're going to come for you. Jordan, would you keep singing for us this morning?